In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use the palette knives brush pack I created for Adobe Photoshop. These brushes utilize the rotation expression so I can rotate the barrel of my pen to rotate the angle of my dab. You'll need the Wacom Art Pen to support the pressure expression. The first brush is called Canvas Knife. If I use heavy pressure, then I get a thick opaque stroke. And if I use lighter pressure, then I get a stroke that's a bit more transparent. I can select other colors and blend them in to get a mixture of the colors, or I can fade the colors together like so. This brush is called Knife Canvas because you get a bit of that canvas texture when you're painting with it. The next brush is Cloudy Knife. Cloudy Knife also responds to pen pressure, but it does it a bit differently. We're getting more texture when we're using light pressure and less texture when we're using heavy pressure. So if I rotate my brush so it's flat like this, I can get horizontal clouds in the distance, or I can turn it to make it more vertical and then I can get big fluffy clouds like this. Make the bottom nice and sharp. I can get a thick cloud like that. Or if I want something that's a bit more wispy, I can use really light pressure and just let it build up like this. The next brush we'll look at is Dry Knife. Dry Knife is a palette knife that looks kind of dry. If I use light pressure, I start to see more of this dry cracked texture. And if I use heavy pressure, then I'll cover that texture altogether. If I want my palette knife to be larger, I can, of course, make it larger. The next brush is Dual Color Knife. This brush uses your foreground and background color. So for example, if I choose white for the foreground color and this teal color for the background color, then when I paint a stroke, I'm going to get both colors. I'll get white when I use firm pressure, and I'll get teal when I use light pressure. In addition to getting gradients like this, one way you might want to use this effect is to select two colors that are similar to each other. For example, a lighter and darker teal. And now when I paint, I'm getting strokes that have a bit more life to them. It's not all one flat color. So if I were doing strokes like this, I can get something that just has a bit more character. And when the strokes overlap, they look a bit more three-dimensional. And I could put little tips just by tapping like this and create sort of a flower or reed effect. Let's try the next brush, which is called Fur Knife. I'll select a nice furry color like this. And if I paint with this brush and create overlapping strokes, I can create sort of a fur effect. Lighter pressure is going to give me smaller, fainter fur. Heavier pressure will give me thicker, broader fur. And I can, of course, make my brush smaller if I want to change the scale of the fur. I can also select lighter colors to go over it, add highlights to it. Or I could select other colors and just do little spots like this. And as you can see, I can create contoured fur just by changing the angle or rotation of my pen. Next is Grainy Knife. As its name implies, you get a really grainy stroke. If I use heavier pressure, I get more grain. If I use lighter pressure, then I get just this really faint broken pattern. Let's try Grass Knife. I'll select a dark green color. If I use lighter pressure, I get fainter grass that's smaller. And as I begin to increase my pressure, the grass becomes more opaque and a bit larger. So I can create a sense of distance like this. I can select a lighter color and just do that same gesture. And now I've created a field of grass. If I want the grass to be at an angle, then I simply rotate the barrel of my pen and I can create grass at any angle. Let's take a look at knife break. This brush gives you a wonderful paint break effect. If I press down firmly, I'm going to get an opaque stroke but as I start to let up my pressure, I can make that paint break or have only a little bit of it come off on the canvas. You can use this to create mountain effects. We'll try it with a light gray color like this. And if we want our paint to have a little bit of depth or texture, we can add a live effect to it for a bevel and you can give it a small amount of bevel. Now when I paint on this layer, it'll have some thickness to it. I can continue to add layers with a bevel effect and then that paint will have thickness as well. You can also change the pattern of this texture. If you go to your brush settings under texture, you can choose a different texture here. You can invert the texture and you can change the scale of it. So if I want the scale to be a bit larger, then I can do that. The next brush is Mountain Knife. Mountain Knife works best if I have it in a vertical position and I use it to draw a really nice sharp edge for a mountain. Once I get that edge in, then I can turn my brush and use lighter pressure just to kind of build up that mountain and create texture. 
Once I have that shape filled in, I can use other brushes on it, like Knife Break. I'll want to get a selection of this layer by holding down Control and clicking on the layer icon. Then I'll create a new layer. I'll hide the selection with Control H, and I can use a lighter color to put in some texture on the mountain. With a bit more effort, you can get something that looks like a decent mountain. Moving on down, we have Multi Knife. I'm going to select a yellowish color like this and make a few strokes. You can see that this brush gives me a triple knife effect. I could use this to create hatching. I can increase the brush size if I want that knife to be wider. You may notice that the paint has a bit of texture as well as a bit of color variability. So if I select a bluish color, then it'll have a few different shades of blue in each stroke. This just gives the paint a little bit more life. Rather than the rotation expression, this is using the direction expression. So rotating your pen isn't really going to make much of a difference. You might be able to also get some interesting splash effects from this brush if you dab with it. Let's see what Oily Knife can do. I'll mix together a few different colors here. As you can see, when I blend the colors together, it has a really nice oily appearance when they mix. And the stroke has a nice oiliness to it when I cut through the paint. Smooth Knife is next. This brush responds really well to pen pressure. You might want to use it for plants or leaves and things like that, but you can also render with it. Here's Streaky Knife. As you might imagine, it looks a bit streaky. I can control the opacity with pen pressure, so I can kind of mix these colors together like so. Texture Knife is perhaps one of the most versatile brushes in this pack. I'll select a dark brown color, and we'll use it vertically to put in some tree trunks. I'll lock the transparency and select a lighter brown, and I'll use lighter pressure to put in some texture on those trunks. Again, the texture I get can be changed from the texture setting, so I could choose something else. I'll unlock the transparency of this layer. I'll select a dark green. And now I'm going to use lighter pressure to create kind of a leafy tree effect. When the brush is fairly horizontal, it'll look like the leaves are hanging down. I'll select a lighter green, and I'll use lighter pressure to add some highlights to these trees. And as you can see, I can create trees with a single brush. This brush does a great job of demonstrating the value of the rotation expression. The final brush is Wet Knife. If I paint with this brush using heavy pressure, I'll get a really thick opaque stroke. And if I lighten my pressure, then I will get something that looks a little bit diluted. If I mix colors into this, then the brush has a really wet feel to it hence the name. This brush might work well for giving you sort of a watercolor calligraphy look. So there you go, that was a demonstration of how to use the brushes in my new Palette Knives brush pack. You can download these brushes from my website at aaronrutten.com.